Hey everybody, we are about to watch a clip from the Netflix Daredevil series, Season 1, Episode 9, and talk about the spiritual themes we see within it. So guys, pull up this clip. It is called Evil. We're going to watch it. Yeah. Three, two, one. Sugar? So, what's on your mind, Matthew? Wasn't that hard to find out. People still remember about the Jack Murdoch around these parts. And what happened to his son. Seal of confession still applies, even over lattes. Not what you're worried about. Do you believe in the devil, Father? You mean... as a concept? No. Do you believe he exists? In this world, among us? You want the short answer or the long one? Just the truth. When I was in seminary, I was more studious than pious, more skeptical than most of my peers. I had this notion, which I was more than willing to speak about at length to whoever I could corner, that the devil was inconsequential minor figure in the grand scheme. Not very Catholic of you. Uh -huh, yeah. In my defense, in the scriptures, the Hebrew word Satan actually means adversary. It's applied to any antagonist. Angels and humans, serpents and kings. Medieval theologians reinterpreted those passages to be about a single monstrous enemy. And in my youthful zeal, I was certain I knew why. Propaganda. Played up to drive people into the church. So you don't believe he exists? Am I done talking? Sorry. Years later, I was in Rwanda, trying to help local churches provide aid and sanctuary to refugees. I'd become close with the village elder, Kahiji. He and his family had the respect of everybody, Hutu and Tutsi alike. He'd helped them all through famines, disease. The militia liked to force Hutu villagers to murder their neighbors with machetes. But nobody would raise a hand against Kahiji, they said. How can we kill such a holy man? So the militia commanders sent soldiers with orders to cut his head off in front of the entire village. Kahiji didn't try to put up a fight, just asked for the chance to say goodbye to his family. By the time he was done, even the soldiers didn't want to kill him. So they went to their commander and asked permission to shoot him. At least give him a quick death. The commander wanted to meet this man who had won the respect of so many. He went to Gehichi, talked with him in his hut for many hours. Then he dragged him out in front of his village and hacked him to pieces. along with his entire family. In that man who took Kahichi's life, I saw the devil. So yes, Matthew, I believe he walks among us.
taking many forms. What if you could have stopped him from ever hurting anyone again? Stopped him how? Great scene. Wow. Great. <laughs> Oh man, that is great gold. Scene. Like it's great acting. It's unbelievable discussion. It, it it's actually pretty good theology. Very good. So everybody, uh, Doug and I have seen this series, right? And Drew, you haven't seen it. I yet. have not. So did that make you want to see it? I kind of do now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a long relationship between the priest and Matt Murdock, and they have all these conversations. Like there's basically one every episode or two, and that goes all the way into the third series. And the stuff they talk about is pretty incredible. Like it's, it's pretty deep. This show really impressed me. But in this scene, this whole talk about the devil, I just thought that was really fascinating. He is actually right about the Hebrew the term does mean adversary, but sometimes through context, you can tell that they are actually talking about an evil angel, and other times it may be an enemy. But the thing that they don't explain in this scene that might help just shed a little light on the concept of, of the devil is that basically, if you look at the Old Testament, they believed in lots of different antagonists, right? So there were lots of evil angels that might try to tempt someone. There wasn't just one. And over time, they began to focus on this one figurehead and link that back to the serpent in Eden. So really, in Christian or Jewish thinking, there is a devil, but there are also all these other spiritual enemies too, like him, and they, the, the forces of chaos and evil are not particularly organized. So Satan might have some angels, but there might be some other ones that are enemies to humans that are kind of just doing their own thing or causing chaos. So that's kind of the old, the ancient Jewish thinking or the Christian perspective right there. Um, what just what what are your impressions of this conversation that they had? It works great into the show, obviously, because this is when he's trying to figure out what he wants to do. Does he want to take steps further and everything like that? There's a handful of good. It's usually Catholic. I'll say that in movies, priests that give these speeches that are sometimes really inspiring. Sometimes goes into kind of the darkness of religion, what they have to deal with. And, you know, this is just another story of stuff that has probably happened or very similar has happened. And to come out and say there is no devil, it's hard to say that, you know, in my opinion, because God made men in the image of him or of God. And that means every single person that was born was made in his image so something had to have been messed up in the wires at some point for them to be that evil so yeah i think absolutely the devil whether you want to say it's lucifer or whether it's his entire crew legion we are legion you know whatever the case is there's evil i do believe in that because for a species who's supposed to be made after a supreme being there's a lot of people who don't act like it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was interesting how when he described, is there a Satan? And he's telling his story about, it's almost like he used Satan more as a metaphor than there's not just like, you know, like I said, Satan isn't just like one person. Satan is almost more of a, a behavior is mm -hmm. the way he was saying it. So this general guy, when he did what he did, I saw Satan then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the next day he might be the greatest guy in the world. And I didn't see it in him at that point, but I saw it in him at that point. And I think that's really interesting way of looking at it. So is Satan one being, or is it just, it manifests itself in people from time to time. And it's almost like that's a metaphor for some of the decisions or the way somebody behaves. I thought that was really interesting the way that he explained it that that's why i believe that yes there is a satan and he does walk among us mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i think like in the new testament 
they're using the concept of Satan both literally and metaphorically in places, you know? Mm -hmm. So and, and when I say metaphorically, I mean, maybe it's maybe they're just talking about evil angels in general or evil or the anti-God forces, right? And then they, mm -hmm. they call that Satan or the adversary, but it may not be the individual Satan. But then other, other right. places it may be. That concept is there because they they believed in the Old Testament period that evil angels were attacking humanity, uh, trying to corrupt them, trying to drive them to extinction or harm them and things like that out of jealousy. And you, you see that in this scene because this character, this commander has been driven to kill somebody that he was so fascinated with. He wanted to sit with them for hours and know have coffee or whatever and i don't know learn from them and then how do you turn around and kill somebody that you just had an hours and hours long conversation with that's yeah what kind of evil is that you know yeah you gotta be pretty demented to do that yeah wow that's a pretty powerful scene i mean really it was uh, and yeah it's it's an amazing show too drew you should definitely I definitely check it out it's not your typical mcu show it's not a disney plus show it is darker but not not like breaking bad ozark's darker which are great shows i just can't finish because i get so <laughs> tired of all the why do you keep doing it anyway but you know it feels a little bit more like new york you know it's right if, you know, they're in Queens, they're in the ghettos, and you really get that feel for that. The Punisher was really good. All, all those that were in the uh, Luke Cage, Iron Fist was okay. Uh, but, you know, that, that world, that world that they were doing, it was kind of a pre-Disney Plus world they were making. Uh, it was really it was really cool in a lot of parts. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when they do bring it back, I hope they keep that element of it. Yeah. I think it is one of the greatest superhero forms of cinema of all time. That show is incredible. And it's like yeah. a gritty Batman Begins, a little bit darker. That's, the gritty was the word I was about to use. It mm -hmm. just, you know, I think that's a pretty good one. Well, I think it just made the list. And I'm going to have to put it on there. Nice. Yeah. I like this scene too because you actually get to see the the priest faith struggle. Like he's talking about a time when he was very skeptical and doubting, and how he came to faith. So it's almost like a testimony here. So this scene is so many things at once. You've got this deep concept of of Satan and evil, and you've got his testimony, which is a good thing, but it's also over this really dark subject that brought him to believe i mean that usually like someone sees a miracle or i don't know they have an experience that's positive to come to faith now here this priest he ends up embracing faith because of something awful that happened and it's just yeah. really interesting yeah well I, I think he was embracing maybe not embracing faith i think he had faith yeah but you know i think this proved to him that because again, I my father was Catholic. My father's side of the family is Catholic. I went to Catholic church all my life, but I don't I don't go deep into their theology. Does Catholicism do they believe in Satan or? Yeah. Because I, I you know it's like I hear a lot of them saying they don't believe in a hell. Yeah. And it's like there's a I lot did. of debate. I think I almost think churches are and every church is different. So like I go to one that does believe in hell, does believe in Satan. And most of them that I've been in have, but I know of, of a lot of other ones around town where there is kind of this debate right now. Does the devil exist? Does hell exist? And people are kind of, I don't know if they're questioning it or retracing that or what, but it really was timely and topical for them to put that in the show. Because there was a book that came out, uh, I remember, from around the time the show was out, and, and it was by Rob Bell, and he took a lot of heat for suggesting that hell's not real. And this came out around that time, so it really was a conversation that was out in the public at that time. 
There's a uh, there's a the most the most underrated TV show of all time is a sitcom called Sports Night. It came out in the late '90s. It lasted like a season and a half, two seasons, right? And there is an episode where one of the characters reads that a certain area of Catholicism is saying there may not be a Satan, and she's struggling through that with that throughout the entire episode and it's a comedy it's a it's a really funny show and uh towards the end she she's like i'm gonna steal the salt shaker because it doesn't matter whether i do or not and her boyfriend's there and he's like look you're not gonna steal the salt shaker because there's no satan you're not gonna steal the salt shaker because you're a good person okay and whether there was a hell or not you weren't going there so don't worry about it just be who you are and I, you know, I think that's a great way to look at it is, you know, we should watch that scene. Yeah, that might be a, well, there's a, it goes through the whole episode, but, but yeah, that one little scene. Yeah. It's just, it, it was really cool. And the show had a lot of messages like that with throughout the entire spectrum of it. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was really cool concept that, you know what? Yeah. Sometimes I think about it. I hear people say there's no hell and it's like, then why am I acting good? Why don't I just go down and take what I want from the store and go get some clothes and just start stealing stuff. Cause who cares, mm-hmm. you know, but that's not how I was raised and I wouldn't do that. And yeah. hopefully I won't be going to hell. <laughs> I will tell listeners if you grew up in church or something and you've heard a lot about heaven and hell, the theology actually goes a lot deeper than just that. Like there are lots of words in the Bible like Hades and Tartarus and other uh, locations that were translated as hell. So there's actually a lot of interesting stuff to look into there. So that's my tease. If you want to go learn about theology, look up some of that stuff. So. Right and I just throw out there real quick. If, if you don't believe there's a hell, I hope you're right. <laughs> I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, obviously, what I believe in. None of us want to go there. None um, of us want you to yeah, go there. I, I mean, there's so many bad people out there and even though they're bad it's like i would hate for them to be in something like that you know maybe they can be in heaven light <laughs> there's a light <laughs> they'll be in the further from insidious <laughs> they they can come up on weekends but during the week they have to stay down it's only you know 70 75 percent cool yeah yeah and then on saturdays and sundays <laughs> they come up and hang with us if i well, make that and hang up with the good people <laughs> anyway Well, thank you all for hanging with us and watching this scene. We will be back soon with another episode. So see ya. Later.